The progressive quilt campout is complete, folks, and a quick spoiler alert, as you can see on the side wall here, the quilt really does get finished, and I did the entire thing while camping through the Pacific Northwest over two weeks. Can you believe it? That's right, this is summer camp, and the quilt is designed by my dear friend Charisma Horton, and in the next series of videos, I will take you outdoors to a different incredible location, block by block, and teach you all the steps you need to know to create this quilt all on your own. The final steps, we end up at Charisma's house and we actually quilt the quilt with her and learn all kinds of other information that's very important to how we pick and plan for our quilting. So it's an entire series. It'll last over several weeks and I really, really hope you enjoy it. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, comment and share the video. That's how we know that you really are loving this amazing outdoor adventure content so we can create more for you. And with that said, are you ready? Let's get on with the adventure. Well, well, welcome back to So Well in the Woods. Isn't this amazing? This is Rob Appel coming to you from Stitch in Heaven. And right now I'm along the wonderful McKenzie River. This is uh, kind of central uh, Western Oregon. And I just absolutely love this location. And I'm so glad you were all here with me today to enjoy this awesome tutorial. Now, remember we are working on the summer camp uh, quilt by Charisma Horton. The entire quilt finishes, let me just remind myself, 60 inches by 72 inches and it's a super fun multi-block where you're going to learn a lot of different skills in this or just refresh your skills. It's super fun, super easy and today's video is actually the beginning of the project. I'll be shooting it in as many different locations as possible but maybe you can tell I'm actually being rained on as I'm trying to film. So I'm going to do my best. We're going to have a lot of fun. Let's dive right in today we're going to discuss a couple blocks but we're really only going to work on our stars block right now when you look at the pattern and or the cutting instructions I've already been marking all over the first couple cuts call for a 12 and a half inch square that's right right here in the project there is a 12 and a half inch solid square that fills in the night sky now the second one we will be doing an applique a raw edge applique of this awesome moon and that will be in our next tutorial because we are now following the instructions as they go. So we're so working on making these uh, five stars right now. I've got four already constructed. We're using our shadow blush fabrics from Ben Artex. It is the blue background. We have the gold and we have the yellow fabrics being used today. For the star block, we're going to need a large uh, background color square and then four smaller squares from the background. We need a slightly smaller square of our brighter yellow and then the golds, these squares are a little bit larger. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and just mark on the backside of all of our four different yellow smaller squares. So now what we want to do folks is we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay with our fabrics right sides together. We have our large blue square and I'm going to position one of my yellow squares Diagonal runs right through. These are going to be our guidelines for stitching. So we are going to sew a quarter inch on either side of those. Let's go ahead and put a straight pin to secure and a straight pin here to secure. Now we're not going to sew over those pins. Those are just holding everything in place. As we come on over to my sewing machine here, and now as we come to that union, we're both squares. Just make sure there's no rippling or puckering. Now we're just going to go ahead and rotate around this corner. So I'm just cutting my threads and now we're going to sew right back down this other line on the other side. Now once these two pieces have been um, cut, we're going to go ahead and press them up. Press into the small squares away from the big center square. So that it looks kind of like a raccoon head like that. Okay, wonderful. So now you should have two of these established. Take those last two squares that you've already marked with your diagonals on and go ahead and drop those. Make sure though you get them right sides together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch from the corner up on one side of the line to secure and then it'll be easier to rotate. So this is just again, another diagonal stitch mark line.
And we have both of these stitched through, so the exact same thing. We want to go ahead and cut these now, and I just like to use a ruler to protect my hands. See? Real simple and easy. So you just created all four of those points uh, in what we call a flying goose or flying geese uh, block now. So now let's return to our center yellow, right? And now these are just gonna match up on two sides, but just make sure that you're pointing away. So we're gonna get those stitched on real quick. And because we're not crossing our threads yet, just make sure you have your everything established correctly, your orientation correctly, and then just let's match these up and stitch these on as well. Okay, that's very easy. But before we can go any further with this unit, like this, we need to go ahead and get our cornerstones on. So that's gonna be real easy. You have your two remaining flying geese, and you should have four remaining squares in your background color. And just one at a time putting on those, what will become our cornerstones, our blue squares onto the edges of our flying geese. Timing's just about right. You can see it's actually getting darker and darker as I finish making up this wonderful star block. I can tell you can barely even see me over there, so let me bring it so you can see it just a little bit better. Doesn't that look awesome? Oh my gosh. Now, I am stationed at Blue Nickel Studios. That's right, I'm at my friend Scott Hansen's home. I'm gonna be staying here for a few days, so you can see I'm already actually setting up real camp this time. I won't be having to travel every day as I continue to make the rest the, this project for us all. So we're gonna focus on the tent block today. I thought it would be perfect. Put out the wonderful colors and start building our patchwork tents from the summer camp quilt project from Charisma Horton. Now you're going to need six of these and you're going to use a variety of your colors, your pinks, your purples, your reds, your light blues. That's the rundown. Basically you can see I've actually made all six, but I want to walk you through the process of how you will make your own as well. Now you'll need the pattern or the pattern and with the kit. Those are available in the link below. What I want to point out folks is your templates are included with your pattern but it's a large piece, so you're gonna have these red lines that you're gonna to need to basically match up. And what I did is I matched them up and then I traced them so I can use these over and over again. So I've made my summer camp template pieces, as you can see here, um, as I was preparing. But the most important part so that your blocks, this is patchwork, not applique, so you can't cheat, right? You need to make sure that you do your one inch square test. So when you print these out of a printer, if you are doing a digital download, now if you bought the pattern uh, printed already or with the kit, of course you don't have to worry about this, but what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find a nice square on a ruler, lay it right on top and make sure that your one inch marker is the same on your pattern as a true one inch. That means everything is accurate in the proportions for you and you can use these templates for your patchwork. Notice the dotted line for the quarter inch seam allowance. That was what I actually traced in for everything we needed. Already I've cut out the blue or the background fabric colors of the units that I need here to create, right? So that's just the exact same size. And I even tried to honor these little corners because Charisma has those built in for alignment. That really helps things as you're moving along. Um, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go ahead and cut our other template shapes here. And let me just verify real quick. The black here is the center of our tent block. Let me show you that again. Okay, so you've got your black. There's two pieces of black, two pieces from your tent body, the rain fly, the orange, right? And then two pieces for your background per block unit that you're making. And of course, if any of this doesn't go perfect, if you're on Team Rob, a little bit less than always accurate, you can always trim these down. We're gonna be finishing at 12 and a half inches square today, folks. Did I let my template blow away? It did. It, did you see that happen? I'll, I'll be right back. I think that so far I've learned the biggest challenge has actually not been, the, well, the lighting's tricky because the shadows will move in and out after I already get set up, but really it's the wind. Man, I'll tell you, being out here in the wind is really tricky because things will blow around and sometimes the audio and the microphones can be tough. So I don't know if you can hear the wind chimes in the background. Wind is high up in the trees today, but we're low in a valley and it's really working out well. So 
Anyways, what I want to show you here is as I've been cutting, the last piece I cut was right here from this section so that I'm able to use the fabrics over and over again efficiently. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up but because I've made myself a paper, or even if it was cardboard or cardstock or something like that, I don't want to trust the paper. I could cut through the template accidentally. I could cut through my finger accidentally. So I'm just going to grab a ruler like yay. And every cut that I make, I'm just going to protect the fabric, my hand, and the template by using a ruler right on top. So the white paper is really just my guideline as I continue to process out these little pieces that we need made. Now, I will cheat a little bit. If I get down to something like that little corner where I just have to lay my rotary cutter on it, like that, I will. But even up here in this top piece where things could move around and I really want that accurate, take the time and you might even want to put a straight pin or something in there here. And now I can just go ahead and nibble away at that tip by pressing down on the rotary cutter, just like that. We're using solids, folks, and because we're using solids, I was cutting my strips with them wrong sides together, or two right sides out, so that you can see now we've actually been able to make two cuts opposite triangles, okay? But we're not going to start by sewing the center. The center is the last seam we make. We're going to build out as we go. So now I need to put on the tent, on the outside of the tent door. And then just to show you again here, what I want to do is I've already pre-cut the template piece itself, but just showing you that you can lay your cutter on there and just cut those tips off. But you definitely want to make sure you get those tips cut off. And remember, even these, all of our units are going to be two wrong sides together. So you're doubling up your units or doubling up your cuts but you're not getting the same direction. You're getting opposite directions for your patchwork. Okay, one, two, three, and then we'll join that center seam. So I'm gonna start with our small piece here, and I'm gonna flip it over, and you'll notice how the bottom corner lines up like that, and then we're just gonna do a nice quarter inch seam allowance all the way through here. Do be careful, you're slightly on the bias, folks. So things could be stretching, so just let your machine do all the work for you. And now, I'm just going to go ahead and press into the smaller piece with each stitching that I'm doing. Okay, and then remember, we had this one on the other side. I left it out to mark ourselves, so we're just going to flip that again. It's kind of a, a long-looking run. Um, match up your, your corners, and you're going to be ready, set to go. Okay, so my fabrics are still right sides together, but this line is now running on the outside of that line, and that looks really crisp, and that's going to give us a really nice accurate start point for just the rest of a basic quarter inch seam allowance. But both of these pieces are now on the bias, and it's a long stitch, so just take your time again. Okay, right? So just like yay, and now go ahead and take a moment and press that over, and then do the exact same thing for the other side. That one looks pretty nice, doesn't it? So then now you're going to want to try to match up the little door pieces as best as possible, not worrying so much about the bottom, but maybe the top there. And you may want to set a pin or two. You could just look at that. You could eyeball it, however it feels right. And I'm just going to go ahead and match up those top seams and head in for a quarter inch seam allowance here. And just as a reminder, as we're pulling this off of the machine, the real key was just making sure that you had your, if you did a digital download, that is, it, you have the one inch mark accurate so that your proportions for your template pieces are accurate so they fit right back together. Beautiful, like that did, to create your tent block for the summer camp quilt. Perfect quilt for the back of your sequoia for camping or of course putting in your tent for those long-term adventures where you and your family get outside and really get to enjoy nature. Thanks again folks for following along on this awesome awesome quilting adventure. We've got several more blocks to come. <music>is yes the wonderful applique block the moon block i think it's the second simplest block in all of the summer camp quilt that is uh 60 inches by 72 inches from charisma horton and we're just going to have an absolute blast i'm going to walk you through a very quick tutorial tonight and i thought it would be really fun to do it here in the dark with all the off-road lights i mean i had to have an excuse to get all the off-road lights right so we've got to make them useful for this one quilt block i promise
course, all the other blocks are shot in other beautiful locations, but with all of the lights on. And uh, with that said, let's dive right in. Now, this applique is a raw edge or a fusible raw edge. And so therefore, I'm going to use my heat and bond feather light. You can use whatever fusible web you like as long as you know how to use it. And what I like to do is I'm going to draw the design on the back side, which is the paper, not the shiny side of the fusible web. Now this particular template comes in two pages or two parts. So what you need to do is you need to draw the first half of the template, including that straight dotted red line, and then match that up to the other half of the template. And folks, just to give you a quick tip, or point, don't put the tip too close to the edge of the fusible web when you're first starting. Give yourself a little bit of room all the way around for your drawing. But once your drawing line is on there, do take the time to cut away most of the extra fusible web. Leave maybe a quarter inch or so outside of the line you're gonna cut on once it's pressed to the fabric. And I guess that's really the next step, right? Is you're just gonna go from there and you're going to press that traced fusible web onto the back side of your fabric. And in this pattern, you're using a yellow and a gold fabric. So I'm using the gold, the little bit darker of the two yellows for the moon applique. And so once that has been ironed on the back, you can go ahead and use your scissors. You can use a small rotary cutter, but I was out here in nature and I wanted to try something. So I actually used Alex Anderson's Quilter Select. It's a really heavy uh, 45 millimeter rotary cutter. And I use that with my rotating Martelli mat here um, and actually cut almost a perfect circle with very little trouble whatsoever. It was very, very simple uh, inside arc as well. So that was kind of something fun I was just experimenting with because I was out here in nature and I like to use what I have. That's one of my favorite things about camping and I guess quilting for that matter too. It, it allows us to think of our resources and, and be resourceful and creative with what we have. But back to the block at hand. Once you do have it cut out, whether it's scissor or rotary cut on your applique, now this is not needle turn, so you're just going to press it down and you're going to have these raw edges but you're gonna have several other blocks to create as you follow along. So what I'm gonna recommend is you take the time to either satin stitch or blanket stitch with a matching thread, but I just had the blue thread, the contrary thread, so I just did a straight line stitching, and because I didn't have stabilizer with me, I actually used a piece of binder paper I borrowed from a friend, uh, just recycled paper, and I just used it as a stabilizer from the back. So I was stitching with my regular straight stitch through the two layers and the layer of paper, taking it nice and slow and it worked magnificently for me as I was making my way through getting um, all of that anchored down. on my wonderful progressive quilting camp out through the Pacific Northwest. And even though we are making the summer camp quilt, looks like I ran into some snow last night, but that's okay because we are making the campfire block to warm up this chilly morning. So stick with me, I'll show you how to make this awesome block for your entire summer camp quilt. Uh, I don't want you to think I was totally unprepared. I am literally standing at 1500 feet and it started snowing on me last night. I woke up about 4 a.m. with the car starting to get some snow. Uh, about an inch or so. So I was going to move on because I wanted a summer camp video, but I thought, well, we've got this beautiful fire and it's such a nice scene. Let's just go ahead and try this and see what we can do. So like I said, we're going to dive right into this block. It's super simple. We're basically making what I'm going to call uh, quarter square triangles, and they're going to all have a variety except for, and I can probably just show you here as easily, just these few out here on the edges, which are gonna have the blue in their position as well, okay? Now I'm gonna walk you through this construction, but I just wanna show you a few more of these. Uh, like I said, the colorized ones are randomized, and I just happen to have two at the moment that have the pink there, but we're gonna make a few for you uh, from the start as we dive right in. Now. Your instructions can be found on, uh, for this, the fire block here. These are on page three in your pattern. And make sure you have your pattern so you're following along with all the actual sizes needed. Now, one of these is going to remain a rectangle. That'll be that top row. And two of these squares are gonna fill in near the top row to give that kind of movement, that fire effect. So now you can see on all of the other squares, I just kind of got going with all of my colors, my yellows, my golds, my orange, orange, this is my reds, and I drew diagonals on all of those. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this diagonal as an actual stitching line. Um, 
Excuse me, I keep saying that because I guess I'm a little <laughs> chilled here. Not stitching line, it's going to be our guideline. So we're actually making two, and I know you know these, half square triangles. So at the moment, let's just come on over here to the machine, and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch myself a quarter inch on either side of that chalk line that I drew using a diagonal, you know, just using a ruler, real simple. Just as a quick reminder though, make sure folks that you have your fabrics laying right sides together for this. Make sure you don't get going fast like myself and you uh, accidentally put your fabrics wrong sides together or mismatch them or something like that. When you're picking out your colored squares, you're just randomizing them. So again, go through all of your stacks following the cut size instructions, randomize your colors, some reds and some pinks and some oranges and some yellows and all of that, like I said, and do it with your blues as well because those blues are just the corner pieces, just the fill-in pieces. Now, I always like to use a ruler to protect my fingers. So um, at the moment, right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and lay a cutter or lay a ruler like yay and just cut those. Now I'm gonna leave these just as they are for the moment because I'm gonna show you another trick here in a second. Okay, now because we're dealing with half square triangles and if you have something like a um, clearly perfect slotted trimmer, you may want to use these to trim your half square triangles and take your dog ears off now before you go on any further. So if you were doing that, you'd just be laying your um, little dotted line on the stitch line here. And the way these were measured out, they're really pretty dang accurate but I might wanna just trim those and then I might wanna get in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment and trim all of these down and then get ready to press them. And as we press them, I'm just gonna go ahead and press them kind of to the dark fabric, to the darker side. And then we'll start to marry these together to make those quarter square triangles. Okay, now folks, the key to this next step is we wanna go ahead and mark our next series of diagonals before we match up the blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make life easy. I'm gonna mark using my edge to edge. You notice I've actually even rotated my seam just so it's in my favor while I'm marking. Little things like that really do seem to help. We're gonna be doing a quarter inch on either side of this marking just like before. So make sure you can see it good. And now the other trick is we're going obviously right sides together, but make sure that your seams are running parallel. Notice the removed stitches from before. So anyways, make sure those seams are running parallel. And now we're just gonna match up corner to corner and we're gonna make those quarter inch seam allowances. One on each side of the chalk line rocking and rolling. Okay, so now this comes off the machine like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and just grab anything handy that's a little bit longer to protect my hand, and we're gonna go ahead and slide right through. Whoop. I did lay my dark side fabrics opposite when matching that seam before, just so I had a little bit of nesting ability, but those are the blocks we're making, and you can see these two feature some of the blue on the outside. So now let's put the whole thing together so we can get this fire built. Okay, and as I was saying before, hopefully you can see everything okay, the top row is just your rectangle. The next row will be your outside squares, okay? Let me show you again on the finished block. That's what it's gonna look like. So then as you come across the top, you're gonna wanna have one of your blue and then maybe another blue on the outside. Remember, I've got randomized colors. So that's what I'm now trying to do is make my randomized colors going towards the outside here, okay? Then as I start to put it together, I'm just gonna try to match up so that I don't have the same colors touching. Ooh, that's a nice play. Those colors, how do we do over here? Okay, that's terrific. Boom, okay, so now all of the different colors are not touching their same color, and we're just gonna go ahead and grab, And but really, folks, just go a few pieces at a time. So I'm gonna grab these two, and I'm going to do my quarter-inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna press, and I'm gonna get the next one. 
Here you see a completed row, and you know me, they're not exactly the same, but I'm just gonna cheat those together, it won't be a problem. You also know what your finished size square is supposed to be, because you have your pattern. So you could have trimmed these down to that size if you really wanted a super, super accurate, matchy-matchy of all of the uh, points and everything. But um, here's something though, I was pressing from this, going this direction, so now I'm gonna press in the opposite direction because that will help the seams nest a little bit. So I'm not a total slob at all times, and I'm not always unprepared ending up in the snow with a summer project, but um, these things happen. This is nature. This is what makes camping so fun. I do strongly recommend you lay them both out at the same time so that you can really randomize where your colors go within the fire to give it that extra special effect. Once you have all of the rows or all the blocks joined into rows, I should say, and uh, don't even ask me what happened there, but I will stitch that right in because it's just going to form, boop, into that corner at seam allowance. So I'm going to drop that on, get ready to rock and roll. And I think I'm starting to see the need actually to put a true quarter inch mark because um, I can see that all of my piecing wasn't perfectly accurate. As sloppy as it was looking, other than the threads and all that, right? It's going to come together beautifully. Get that last row on, then you can trim it up, block it if you need to. All right, folks, it's a success. We got it. Awesome. The snow is starting to fall pretty heavy, but there it is, the campfire block. You need two of them. I've got two of them right here, ready to rock and roll into my quilt. I'm going to set these aside, keep building more blocks with all of you as we get ready to put this top together and head off to Eastern Washington to go see Charisma and have her help quilting it. It's a beautiful, uh, well, it's almost a little after four o'clock. We're waiting for golden hour a little bit through the trees. I'm up in Northern Washington, real near my friend Scott's house. And I just wanted to take a moment and walk everybody through the Little Trees Block. Now the Little Trees Block from Charisma Horton Summer Camp Quilt Pattern, page three here called Small Tree. And then it's gonna carry over here onto the top half of page four as we go. And if you're already looking at the diagrams, you can see we're actually going to do the same magic flying geese like we did in our star block just a little earlier. So you already know how to do this. So I'm just going to walk you through the color changes and how we're going to build our awesome small trees block. So this is going to be great. You're going to need a total of four of these all together and you're mixing and matching all of your greens uh, for this construction. And of course, all that information is right there for you in the cutting information on your pattern. We've got a couple of things to hold uh, my fabrics down as often when we're filming out here in the wind, it can be a little bit challenging, uh, but boy, is it awfully awesome to get to sew out here in nature. What I've done is uh, for each one of the groupings, each one of the trees, I'm gonna need four of the squares and the squares on the wrong side, the back side, have been marked with a diagonal line uh, just like we've done before. So let's go ahead and get ready to um, match these up and I'm just going to go ahead and lay one of these with that diagonal heading down and I'm going to grab a couple straight pins. So now folks what you're doing is you're just lining these up so that your uh, chalk line, your pen line, your marker line there goes all the way through and you're making sure that your small squares are on the corner of your big square and then we won't be sewing through the pins either just holding the actual squares in place, mostly just for when we get to this little intersection right here. These chalk lines, folks, this is a guideline. We're doing a quarter inch on either side. I think I finally set it right in this video and oh, let's get Louie's little battery light going. There we go. That may help you all see just a little bit better. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna hit the gas here and sewing a quarter of an inch on either side. And again, because you're making four of these tree units or tree blocks, uh, you're probably chain piecing. But I've already done a little bit of the prep work here, as you can see. This is kind of where we're heading, but we need to add another color on top. So as I'm building up these uh, units here now, I'm just gonna go ahead and get myself into a predicament with my threads. There we go, save that. And so we're just gonna do this one block at a time. But of course you can chain piece. Okay, so now you're just gonna go ahead and cut through that diagonal line that you created. That was your first marking line, right? 
And now we're gonna go ahead and press these bad boys, these little ears over or the small background color over and away from the big square. And with these remaining squares, we're gonna drop these units here. And you just wanna make sure that this diagonal that we started with goes off through the tip, through Mr. Raccoon's forehead there. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna stitch on both sides. So this is what they refer to often as the magic flying geese method. I love my little old singer out here in the bush because we can sew out of the back of the car, making this super fun and entertaining. And I love the way it looks. Now I'm gonna sew down the other side. Let's see if I can get a little bit better start this time by keeping both of my thread tails underneath my presser foot. Now we're coming from the top of the raccoon down. Now we're gonna cut the units apart. I won't need those pins anymore. Although it is holding those parts there for me. That's the trunk we'll get to here in a second. Trunk of the tree. So on the diagonal, on the chalk line from before, do them all at the same time. The benefit of chain piecing or Henry Ford style assembly line quilting that I like so much. I like that feature, Alex, I like that feature. Perfect, okay. And so I'm just gonna press all four of these real quick here. Okay, so we have the four units pressed out. If you wanted to take the time to trim and tidy all of that, you most certainly could. But what we're gonna do now with these pieces is we're going to start to stack them and build them into the trees. And in the pattern, there's been a mix and match of the different uh, colors. So you don't have to go light, medium, dark. Feel free to mix them around because that kind of gives a little more variety to the blocks. And we will definitely be doing that in the tall trees in the next video. We'll be mixing on variety of colors. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this color in here. So you're gonna use one, two, three of your half, well, these are called flying geese at this point. So we're gonna use three of those plus the trunk to build this. So let me show you how you would build your trunk so that we can finish off this block. We have a couple of more seams to do on the side as well. So you can see the brown is here. So just make sure you don't sew them this way. You wanna make them tall and skinny. These are our, our tall, or these are our little trees, but they're tall, skinny little trees. These are babies, they're just growing. So anyways, hit this with your quarter inch seam allowance again. And now we're gonna go ahead and just stitch this last row across here so we can put on the finishing touches. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna line up, see my seam allowances are still parallel. So I'm just gonna take one side of this and I'm gonna trim it down because the truth is at the end of the, all of the work, I'm gonna take the time to square up all of the blocks, right? So now I can just go ahead, that, those lines aren't bothering me visually anymore. I'm gonna put this on but because I've trimmed it off, I'm going to put it on with the slightest seam allowance because that's going to make up for the fact that I have probably removed a little of the math I need later. And I'll actually do the same thing on the other side. So that's what the block's going to look like, folks. Isn't that awesome? I think it looks terrific. Okay, looks like I just found the end of the road due to a wonderful rain and snowfall this year. Um, I don't like this location for making a quilt, so let's keep exploring. Now, Mount Shasta is right there in the background coming out of the clouds. I woke up this morning to a chilly 38 degrees, but I am pumped up and ready to get quilting with all of you. Today, we're focusing on the big trees. Big trees pattern information is gonna be found on, <laughs> sorry, I'm excited, found on pages four and five of your pattern. And I've already done some of the prep work. And I think I want to most importantly point out that all of the different blocks, I believe we're making nine of these things, are going to be different. So the trees you make are gonna use the three different groups greens from your uh, blush, your shadow blush from Benertex, and they're just going to form so you don't have to worry about like a light, medium, dark uh, stacking gradient in your trees, okay? And we're going to use the light, medium, and dark of our greens, so let's just set that aside. And I'm going to go ahead and dive right in here um, on the what will be the top row of the tree. 
Now you can see by this diagram here, we are mostly going to be attaching our units like we would with binding strips, right? So that we're getting a bias stitch, but we're just going to be going on this uh, 45 degree angle to form these individual shapes of the trees. And the page before told you which ones to match up size wise. So let's just go ahead and dive in. And now we want to make sure that we're utilizing our fabrics right sides together. Okay, and so what I do here is I'm just gonna lay these right sides together, but first you now may notice, it's gonna be hard to see where this angle or this corner is. So folks, there's nothing wrong with just shifting this just a freckle, right, at the moment, so I can see where that's gonna land right there. And now I'm gonna take my ruler. Oh, and by the way, thanks, Alex Anderson. I appropriated some of the tools when you weren't looking out of your home. Uh, so I want to give these a try. So I'm just going to mark. It doesn't necessarily need to be done this way. If you have a laser light on your sewing machine, this is the benefit of that kind of a tool. But what I want to do is once I got my right sides together, I just gave myself a guideline. And now as we come on over to the sewing machine, that guideline is now our stitching line. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and press this one flat. You can press your seams open if you like. I'm just going to press over to the dark side. Okay, and now we're going to put on this other strip we had waiting for us here. Okay, so same situation. We want to draw, or I like to draw, I should say, my line here corner to corner. I'm now going on to the next row, and you'll notice this row is a little bit wider uh, this way than the last. That's intentional. Remember, just follow your cutting instructions, and we're going to do the exact same piecing, right? We're just going to go ahead and flip that over, and again, I just kind of want to know where that mark is going to be. So I'm really just letting that cheat just a second to over there, just a, a thread, so I can see it. I like to give myself a sewing line for marking. Now I'm not back stitching, but you most certainly could. Those rows are gonna be secured with other rows. So if you're new to quilting, don't worry about that. That seems something a little different possibly. We're gonna stitch those over here in a second. So stitch, well maybe, let's see this. Mark, stitch, trim, press. Those are the steps following the measurements within the pattern, and it's super simple. Of course, the squares are the easiest to mark. You don't need the fabric below to do that. So I usually catch both of those at the same time while the tools are in the hand. And because there's no overlap, we can really, on this one, sew both pieces on both sides. Just make sure that you have both diagonals heading in the appropriate direction to form a wedge shape. You want them both coming together like this. We just have one more section of the trees and that's the trunk itself. And so we have just a little square and two fun rectangles. No diagonal here, folks. We're just gonna stitch these together. So just like that bottom section of our tall trees, um, we can sew this side on and then the other side before we have to stop and press. I'm just gonna press into the brown center wedge there, but now we can just start building our tree from the trunk up, right? So just make sure you're connecting that down to the widest side of that, that big uh, wide strip we just did, or excuse me, not the wide strip, but the bottom strip, I should say. So that's gonna connect like that. So just go ahead, get your right sides together. And I just like to have a good habit of tidy sewing. So I press each time, and right now I'm gonna press from the trunk into the section of tree, then from this section to the next section and just work my way up the tree that way. Okay, so now we bring in the medium, and this is that one that was the extra wide, right? So that's gonna go here, just making sure our wedges are heading in the right direction. And last but not certainly, certainly not least, let's put the tip of our tree on the top here. Keeping in mind, you have a random series of cuts that you've made of all the different colors and the different widths. And that was so that you can lay out your trees in different organizations. And there it is, looks fantastic, amazing.
Love it. We're going to put all of the blocks together now from the summer camp quilt pattern. So if you don't have the pattern, if you don't have the kit, you can find the link below. Um, of course, you can get a digital download from Charisma herself. And what we're doing today is we're looking at the actual instructions here on page five. And so on page five, you're going to find your layout diagram and you can see we're just going to go block by block by block. So we really don't need a design wall much. Um, I'm going to follow the colors on Charisma's color chart for which to place in which location. As far as the big trees, if you'll remember, the big trees are random blocks and um, the little trees are kind of random as well. So we're just going to play. All of the stars are the same. The campfire is the same as far as color goes and things. So we're just going to now start to go ahead and put the blocks together in rows so that we can build our quilt top. Before I got to this point, I have taken the time to trim all of the blocks down to 12 and a half inch squares, and I've stacked them in organizational piles. So like I've got my two campfires, and then I've got my little trees here, and then I've got my big trees. And so it's gonna be easiest now to go ahead and work through if I just keep my piles organized this way so that I can grab them and go as we start working on our top row. So I'm gonna need one star to start with, okay? And then I need my moon, and then I'm gonna need another star in my solid. So we're gonna bring these up to the top of our stack. And so now the biggest key is I just wanna figure out which way do I want my moon facing? Do I wanna face it uh, pointing slightly downward? I definitely don't want it pointing that far up, but if I wanted a little curve, even though it's slightly different than Charisma's pattern, I could put it this way. But let me show you a design trick, folks. See this? The moon's technically still pointing towards the quilt. If I put it the way I have it, the moon would be pointing away from the quilt. So I'm gonna do what Charisma's done, and I'm gonna put it in that same format there. And so the first thing I have to do is literally just match up these two seams. I'm gonna go right sides together here, matching up corner to corner. And now this is where you wanna be nice and accurate and keep that quarter inch seam allowance going on all of your patchwork. And to help me with keeping everything accurate, I found it in my toolbox. I just uh, do, wasn't using it earlier, but this is a magnetic seam guide. So I can go ahead and put this. Now the, the presser foot on the actual featherweight's got a big ankle. So I'm just gonna kind of put it right here. And that's magnetized and that's gonna help me keep my seam allowances as um, accurate and consistent as possible. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and lay those fabrics there. If you want to start back stitching at the corners, you can, but we will be stitching over all of them. My goal was to get my quilt completely finished before I got here to Charisma's house. So she says, I can't come inside until I get the quilt top finished. So I'm making it on her porch. You can see we've got the wonderful quilt barn to be in the background. We've got the chickens in the background. So I'm doing my best to get my quilt top done so I can come inside and we can start quilting this, folks. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, even with my little portable mini iron, is I'm just going to press as I go. Each block, I just really like to do this. And if I can stay organized, I'll press the top row all the way towards the right-hand direction. And then when I start to build the next row down, I'll actually start in the other corner. And that way I can be pressing in the left-hand direction so that these seams can be nested. Okay, back to our diagram. I need one more star block after the moon. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Matching up the corners. And that's why it was so key for me to spend a little bit of time and trim all of the blocks down. I did actually patchwork on several different machines in many different locations. And so my blocks were a little wonky at first, but fortunately they were all large enough to be trimmed to a nice 12 and a half. Okay, so after the two stars and moon is that one blank block, the one I called the easiest of all the blocks to make. And uh, so easy, that one's just gonna drop right in and then we'll have one more star and we'll be done with the top row. So if you've never made a quilt before, what you want to do is you want to now make all of your rows before you join any of the rows into actual uh, making the quilt top itself. It's just much easier and this way you can stay organized and you can also double check to make sure that your blocks are all in the correct orientation before you start sewing the rows together. Okay, and then there's the first row we have. So basically we have one, two, three, four, five blocks in every row that we need to make. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and set this on my new magnetic design wall and I'll be back after I have all of the rows sewn together to show you how to put those rows together. 
together a few at a time and then we will get this quilt quilted. This is great, the magnets actually work. So yes, go ahead, uh, if you don't have another kind of design wall, you can start laying out your rows. Uh, so here's our top row and our second row, magnetically placed on my design wall here. So now I'm just gonna marry up this seam right here and all of my other rows are actually already stacked over at the machine in order. So I'm just gonna grab this seam, carry it over to Louie, the wonderful old antique um, singer, and get this assembled for us all. All right, I'm so glad that design wall worked awesome. So now I've got that seam together. And like I said, I've got the rest of the rows organized and I did take the time to make sure they're in sequential order and all of the tops are facing that direction right now. I do apologize about the audio a little bit. I'm racing against the rain and the neighbor is having his yard graded. Uh, but when you work outdoors, these are just some of the fun things that we get to experience, right? So no big deal. We're just gonna sew this row together so you can see it all coming together. And also, again, really fun. We've had plenty of power. Even though I'm at Christmas home, I'm still running off of the battery for both the machine and the iron. So I will give us also a power check at the end of the day, because I will have several hours of stitching in a row without adding power from solar uh, or driving. So we'll have a really good reading at the end of this assembly today. The key is, is just to marry up the seams from each block section. That's why we are kind of pressing them in different directions. So as long as I keep matching up each of those seams at the blocks, then even without pins, I'm fairly confident that everything is lining up real nice and easy, which is great. Okay, folks, so we're just double checking to make sure we have it all as we're supposed to. So there's the two rows put together now. And I'm not gonna take the time to press it out. My little iron I have with me would work, but it would take an awful lot of time. And one of my things I always do before I quilt any quilt top is I take the time to really steam and press it and make sure everything's really nice and crisp before we put it on the long arm. The reason we traveled all the way from California to Eastern Washington with Charisma Horton's pattern is so that we could have her help quilting it. She's an amazing long arm quilter and she's right inside. So as soon as I get this top done, I'll go inside, press all the seams real nice and I'll have Charisma help us load it to her long arm and we're just gonna see what happens from there. So this is really awesome. I'll be right back to show you the entire quilt top and we are just moments away from the grand finale of our summer camp. We can hear the dog snoring just upstairs there as we're sewing in the secret. This is like the bat cave of the quilting. Oh, and then because the robot's quilting the quilt, we're gonna go out and work on the table and keep playing in her film studio and yes. get it together. Excited. That is right, everybody. Can you believe how blessed we all are to be sitting in the almost completed quilting barn with Charisma Horton? Long arm quilter extraordinaire. I was telling her about my wild idea once I got the machine painted, I wanted to travel around and create a camping themed quilt in the car. And she says, Rob, I have a summer camp quilt. It would be perfect for what you're doing. I totally, I just let me send it to you. You'll see, and I did, and now it's history. Thank you very much for uh, talking with us all and teaching me. And I guess uh, as I wrap up kind of this whole video series, uh, quilting in nature, not only was it way better than I expected, uh, a lot more fun, um, but I also ran into some extra things, weather challenges and different little things that happen along the way, but I guess life is just very much like quilting mm -hmm. in that matter. And um, I like it when I get to hang out with people that have other, and I'm just gonna say right now, better ideas than I do so that I can benefit and uh, we can all grow together. So thank you for being here uh, for this and we'll make sure you get to see the finished quilt as soon as I finish talking Charisma. And you see what I did here, folks? Charisma is now gonna quilt my quilt for me. <laughs> I did it, I did it, yay! Can I get a high five on that one too? Yep, absolutely. You're awesome, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and there it is, folks. Can you believe it? Fresh off the long arm. I'm super, super excited. Could you see that? There's Bigfoot and trees and the actual Sasquatch himself, or herself, sorry, uh, quilted into the background design. I think it's super, super cool. Many, many thanks to Charisma and her expertise on the long arm quilting. I did end up binding it in uh, the green. I had some strips of the green I brought with me just for the photography. I thought that'd be really fun. That way I've kind of customized it myself. Your uh, pattern will call for binding it in the background color.
color of the blue. But anyways, I just thought it'd be fun to do that while I was here. The whole project is done. You've seen it all of the step. Incredible, progressive quilt camping adventure. I think that's what we've decided to call this thing. Anyways, I'm super blessed, super excited. I can't wait for all of you to make your own version of summer, summer camp. And also don't forget, Charisma has a bunch of amazing, I mean like bunches, hundreds of amazing patterns, but I've got another great series of patterns. I think you'll really dig if you like this one as well. So we've got those available for you. Super excited, super blessed. And thank you folks for being here. Until we do another amazing project together, please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.